Hello and welcome to Food Rebels. I'm your host, AJ Sharp, taste expert, food writer, PR agency owner and taste expert for a number of different food awards, actually, including Great Taste, who I judge for. Uh, Food Rebels is the radio show and podcast that brings you the most exciting new brands, food experts and live on air tastings. And we love showcasing the rebellious side of the food world. We're on our final show of our Guild of Fine Food Takeover, and I'm joined here again in the studio by Christabel Cairns, the Operations and Marketing Director at the Guild of Fine Food. Driving force behind Great Taste. Welcome back, Christabel. Thanks for having me back. It's really exciting. Last week, uh, if you tuned in, we were talking about 30 years of Great Taste and the journey of this incredible award scheme. This week, we want to focus on Great Taste and what the awards are today. Uh, We know that they've just, literally, it's just open for entries, hasn't it, Christabel? It has. So we're in the middle of Members Fortnight, which um, is a bit we do for Guild of Fine Food members, and they get to enter earlier at a slightly lower rate. And then on Monday, on the uh, 22nd of January, we're going to open for general entry, which basically means any food producers can enter, and they'll be able to do that until the 6th of February. 6th of February. And you do cap it sometimes, don't you? We do. So if, by any chance, we reach our, our entry cap, so we have, you know, all the entry places have gone by the six, before the 6th of February, we will close it early. So if you're thinking about entering, you need to get on with it. Yeah, exciting. We'll also be finding out a bit more about the Golden Forks, which is the culmination of the Great Taste Scheme, and this is when the Supreme Champion announced and all the Golden Fork winners and it's a really incredible awards ceremony and today we're joined by a great taste Golden Fork three-star winner Lucia Laura Hoiti Fisher I don't know if I pronounced that correctly <laughs> who is from La Mojitu and they make the most incredible Basque uh, which is known as a San Sebastian it's a, it's a type of cheesecake isn't it and it's a family business yes welcome so great to have you here thank you very much for Can inviting me can you tell me a little bit about your business? You run it with your sister, don't you? Yes. So the business started uh, with my older sister, Maria, hence the name of La Maritsu. Um, and Maria lives in Ecuador and uh, she started uh, selling these Basque cheesecakes, uh, typical from the Basque country. And then uh, a few months later, I was in London and I could see as well many restaurants and uh, it was kind of trending the the Basque in general food but of course the Basque cheesecake it was quite well known so I started it in London and then my youngest uh, sister she came over and uh, she, and we are together now in London. Oh it's fantastic and you've actually brought some in and we're going to taste it in a little bit but mm-hmm. before we do that I just want to hear a bit more from Christabel about about the Great Taste Award Scheme, how it is today, because we've heard about how it is in the past and how it started with 246 products in in 1994, and now it's 2024 and it's 30 years later. What's the what's the scheme like nowadays? Predominantly, a lot bigger is probably where to start off. So it's uh, f- that we had 14,205 products last year, um, and we'll be judging the same this year, but. Probably what hasn't changed is we still judge everything blind. So, you know, there's no packaging, there's no brand names involved. um, And, you know, the producer will still get that range of opinions, which has always been so important to make sure that there's a fair judging process, that you're taking out any subjectivity. Um, And it's also open to producers of all sizes. So uh, Luthia's business um, is, you know, she's just mentioned it's mainly her and we'll probably hear a bit, but she's actually until very recently was an architect as well oh wow a multi multi-talented lady <laughs> but she won one of in her first year of entering one of the biggest prizes in great taste so she <laughs> won the uh, golden fork for startersan award of the year which i guess is is just a brilliant story because it shows how even if you're a very small and relatively new business you can still kind of stand up against some of the bigger brands who might have those huge marketing budgets and, and you know that's that's the whole point of great taste to discover some really great tasting food and drink I think people are always surprised to hear how the majority of the people that enter into Great Taste are all much smaller producers than you would imagine. Yeah, Uh, that's true. I mean, we do the sort of numbers each year and I guess you do see Great Taste Awards um, on supermarket shelves. That's that's true. But, you know, sort of 80, 90 percent are small to medium sized businesses. Mm -hmm. And I guess you sort of hear about the bigger companies because they've got, again, those marketing budgets to shout about. But what's really important to us, you know, we stagger the entry fees. So if you're smaller, you you pay less. We had a bursary scheme this year. Um, so that was micro producers. So we define that as sort of one or two people, turnover of less than 100 grand and very new businesses who hadn't entered great taste before. 
that's the majority of our entrance and it's it's really important and this is but one of her cheesecakes today but we always say to the judges you know products are a bit like people's babies they've turned up we need to do them justice you know some of them had literally dropped them off at our our front doors of our offices and um you want to see every product do well you feel that weight of responsibility i've judged now for what is it eight years something like that and you really feel a sense of responsibility when you're judging something that you have to give it the time it deserves, even if it's the last item of the day or the last item before lunch or things are happening, you have to still stop and go, hang on, somebody has put a lot of time and effort into this product and it deserves our attention. Absolutely. I mean, th- that 14,000 products or just over <coughs> represents well over 3,500 companies and they come from 109 countries around the world. So that those numbers can kind of... Well, they can both be a bit meaningless because it's just numbers. But also, if you just think about that amount of people and one company might have five or six people that on, you know, at the end time that the results come out at the end of July, beginning of August, are going to be anxiously, you know, getting into the computer and finding out what they've done and reading that feedback. So it's just really important that the judges take that seriously and, you know, feedback useful stuff to the producers. And can you describe an average judging day? I'll add how we, how we experience it as well. But when you set up the judging room for everyone to come in, what does that look like? The best way I can describe it is it's a bit like a restaurant because everybody's you know seen how that works. So you'll have um, various tables of judges. So if you like your, your restaurant guests and they'll all be experts in the food industry. And we spend quite a bit of time making sure those panels of people are balanced because you might have a journalist who will look at something in a little bit of a different way to, let's say, a product development person or a retailer and it's really important that you kind of got all those opinions being heard and then we've got a a chef in the kitchen cooking some of our hot products we've got waiters and waitresses who are a great taste team making sure all those products are sort of being delivered in their best state we judge everything blind tasted which means it's decanted so if you've got a jar of jam that's decanted into a, a clean empty jar so you can't say see any of the branding and then the judges will work through and this is where i'm sure you'll have some things to say uh huge mix of products so you know you're not finding the best cheese you'll taste a cheese and then a steak and then a biscuit and a jam and you're really looking at everything on its own merits so if everything is really really good it could all legitimately win a three star but it never does interestingly I think the most I've ever seen three stars in one day was probably three yeah I mean to get a three star you've really it's got to be really brilliant we always say if you see a three star on a shelf don't leave the shop without buying it. We want to be able to say that confidently, which means that pretty much all the judges in the room have got to have agreed. So that's going around several palettes, different opinions, and they've all got to say, yeah, this is the best Bass cheesecake I've ever tasted, the best strawberry jam I've ever tasted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what gives it its credibility. And that's it. So so we'll come in as, as judges and there may be, I don't know, 40 so judges maybe in the room. You'll be on a table where there may be two, three or four of you. And you've got probably 20 or so products out on the table in front of you. And you'll have a little chat and you'll decide which are the least kind of punchy or spicy or garlicky or peppery. And you'll start with the milder ones and you'll work all the way through to the stronger tasting ones. And that's just to protect your palate. The added element, which really appeals to my ADHD brain, is that there's hot food coming in from left to right at any point where hot food has to be prioritised. So the minute that arrives at the table, you have to taste it when it's absolutely at its most perfect point. And Jamie's incredible, isn't he? The chef there, he'll he'll always have a little label on the top that'll say, leave to rest, do not taste before 11 o'clock or something like that, so you'll know. Absolutely, and that's that's back to making sure you've, you know, some of these products have travelled a long way to get there and we want to make sure that they're tasted in the best possible state. Judging's quite hard work, as you'll you'll kind of attest to. You know, people think that, oh, you know, I want to be a great taste judge. It must be the best job in the world. It's great. You get to discover amazing products, but it's got that weight of responsibility and you've got to give everything a fair hearing and you've got a lot of food to get through and different varieties and, and your knowledge has got to be quite broad and you've got to sort of speak up when you don't know some things Mm. and get other experts in the room. So it's, you know, your concentration needs to keep going. Yeah, and you're pulling in a lot of different skills at the same time, particularly when if you're a coordinator on the table. So each table will have a, a coordinator, a sort of team captain, who is not more important than any other judge. They're simply collating the results, but also adding their own judgment into them. You're also having to sort of negotiate where you may have two other judges. One thinks it's marvellous and the other one doesn't think it's much at all. And then you're sort of trying to get your own judgment in and 
debate it until you come to a, an accord on your table. Very, very rarely has there not been an accord, but occasionally I've put my hand up and said, can you just take this one away? We can't agree. <laughs> yeah, and then that's when we, you know, we send it around the room and that's where we've got lots of people there so we can make sure we've got that kind of democratic as much as possible um, agreement at the end. And for a three star, I mean, at ones and twos, they will always go to at least probably six different judges will have tasted those products and gone, yeah, no, we all agree. It's, it, uh, it's unfortunately, it's no award. And that, of course, happens to the majority of the products that are entered into the scheme. Then if it's a one or a two, they will have to be tasted by more people. But a three star, you almost have to have every single person in the room agreeing that this is a three star. And that's where it, you know, that product will go around the room. But you can tell when there's a three star in the room because everyone gets twittery and excited and there's energy and there's sort of... <gasps> oh my god you have to taste this yeah it's funny you can sort of it's there's a bit of energy and there's a bit of silence at the same time where people are just sort of thinking and then you know seeing oh how much more could I take before it needs to go to the next table but to put into context this cheesecake is looking at me from across the oh. desk in the studio here but to put into context what um Luthia's done with her product so she you got a three star for your award which would have been the top 250 products out, out of, of 14,000 out of 14,000 so it's about one and a half percent Wow. So it's pretty incredible. And, you know, all those people have got to agree. But then those 250 products are rejudged in a in a finals day that we held at the end of judging. And so we get to send another cheesecake in and the other 250 products all, all send them in as well. And then the products are um, we do pick out the top ones. So we pick out the top the top products in in certain regional things. So, you know, we'll have the top product from England. We'll have the top product from Spain. And what Luthia's product one was a product from a very small company. So we called it Startazan. And that is, a, you know, small number of people, one or two people in the company, a fairly recent company. And they've basically scored the highest out of out of all those products. Incredible. So out of those 250, how many awards were then given? Uh, I think we had 16 Golden Forks this year. 16. And you got one of those, Luthia. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like on the day? Amazing. Like, we, 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 like, a, such a small team, as um, you explained, like, we we couldn't believe. Like, we we had to re-listen everything that you said. Like, out of 14,000, only 1.8, they received the three stars out of those 250. But then only 16. And Wow. It's, uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. I was there that night. I just <laughs> remember like squeals of excitement coming <laughs> from that corner. <laughs> yes, yes. And we all rushed over to come and taste the cheesecake <laughs> after that. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a great uh, night and for us like celebrating as well because it's true that it's been a lot of effort, even though it's our only product. Um, we did put uh, all our effort and if someone asks what is it, the <laughs> special thing is. I say we put a lot of love because at the end of the day, my sister and myself, we are baking them. And we know most of the times where currently we are having more and more orders and it's very difficult to track the cakes. But uh, at the beginning and these past two years has always been, OK, we have one order. We have one order for Mary. And we it's not that we were thinking of Mary, but we've baked every cheesecake uh, with a lot of care and love. And that is something that uh, is quite uh, nice to after like being and of course like uh, the, the cheesecake is is is, go is really good and yeah. it's amazing. Well, could we taste? We're, we're going to taste yes. a little bit of it. Yes. And um, while we're tasting that, because it's not very interesting on radio for people to hear us eating, <laughs> could you tell us a little bit about how you make this? Yes. Yes. So <laughs> the the recipe is very. <laughs> it's very so good. <laughs> sorry. So good. <laughs> the recipe is very simple. And is is not a very elaborated. So I know how bakery and especially cakes, they they need to uh, they are quite elaborated in terms of uh, toppings and things like that. So this cheesecake, uh, the elaboration, the process is is quite simple. We mix all the ingredients together. Uh, the main ingredients are the cream cheese, uh, the sugar, the eggs, and the uh, cream. And there's no there's no sort of base to it, is there's there? There's no base of biscuit, and there's no jam. There's no jam, but there's no. this beautiful golden brown, yes. sort of caramelized gorgeousness on the top, isn't it? Yes, there? yes. So the fact that the cheesecake is baked at high temperature, especially the last minutes of the of the baking, we do bake at higher temperature, so that it's naturally burnt 
actually like it's it's not some people ask us if whether we've done like the creme brulee oh like a torch or something yes yes but no what we do is we bake them and then in the last minutes of the oven we turn them up so that it gets a bit burned and naturally caramelized and then the fact that it doesn't have the biscuit below it makes it, it makes it very rich in flavor like you can only taste the cheesecake that is very soft and creamy even though i like the biscuit in general like i really like biscuits but you know you concentrate just on the cheesecake it's amazing so smooth and just well creamy as you just said but it's delicious but there's somehow there's like this lactic from the dairy that's come through that's almost slightly zesty lemony but obviously you haven't added any no, lemon have no, you no no but there is that zing in this sort of very creamy not overly sweet perfectly sweet really well balanced product it's, it's yeah i mean it's, you sort of imagine taking a huge spoonful of and it was quite a huge spoonful that i took of fast <laughs> cheesecake and it, it's not in any way cloying it's very smooth and yeah as you say it's, it's leaving my mouth watering almost yeah <laughs> i just want to eat some more and eat some mm. more it's it's there's something very moorish about it mm. How has it been since winning the awards? What's happened with your business? So uh, we were growing. We were, uh, so uh, since we started, it was a um, growing process all the time. At the beginning, little by little. But at that point, we already had plans for uh, um, opening a shop. So it was great, the fact of winning, because then we were able to uh, get to be known much better and uh, very quickly. Um, Your marketing was put on turbo yeah, charge, I'm yeah. imagining. <laughs> and uh, actually, when we opened the shop one week ago, the only decoration that we have <laughs> at the moment is the um, the um, the tro- Your no, trophy. Your trophy, the great, yes, the, yes. the golden fork trophy yes, the golden that you won. Fork. And uh, because there's so that and there's some flowers and so on, some cheesecakes for display. But a lot of people ask, uh, what, what is this? And then I explain, like, um, because it's. Uh, there's not there is a lot of people that know about it but then there's others that oh, yes i know the sticker because i've seen it and this is a quality but they don't know uh, how like okay there's fourteen thousand products uh, judge and so, and so and so yeah we explain it and for somebody <laughs> like you guys to have you know you set up the business was it two years ago yes and to already have won one of the yeah. top accolades yeah. in an, a, a global accreditation scheme like great taste is mm-hmm. just it's so unusual yeah, we we noticed we noticed especially when uh, when we were in the awards, and we got to chat with um, the rest of the producers, and we could see their faces. And when we talked, uh, and they said, "We've been twenty years I, after mm, one star. We've been and and then we realized that uh, when we got back, like wow, like this it means it means a lot. But it's true that we are young. We're not in the um, um, hospitality and the, in the food industry, or now we are, but we haven't been before. Um, so we are still um, processing how big this is. Oh, it's just incredible. I mean, f- from your point of view, is it is it as rare as I th- I'm as guessing it is? It is, yeah. I mean, it, it really is. I mean, we we have some, in a, you know, there's always like an amazing. Disc- I love great taste because you find something every year. So, you know, last year there was a delicious. Um, it was a soy sauce alternative called Noya sauce. Oh yes, um, yeah. which was just great. And then you also had a uh, there's a company called Mr Vicky's who make chutneys and chili jams and stuff who are really consistent winner. And still, you know, this year they had two or three three stars. So it's sort of you get that balance between completely new discoveries and brand new people and companies, and then consistent winners. And I think mm. that's what that's what's great about it. The feedback that we're asked to put down as judges. It's very comprehensive. You know, we try and highlight the things we really liked or we highlight as kindly as possible why something may not have scored more highly. And you actually find, you get feedback, don't you, that some of the producers take that feedback and actually go and tweak their product. Exactly. And and tweaking, I think, is probably quite a good way of putting it. So, as you know, AJ, you, you know, you taste something and you're like, oh, it's a, it's a one star. And it's sort of, it's so close to being a two star. But if only you had... Mm. a bit more salt or a slightly more balanced acidity or something and then people who have listened to that and they come back and they enter it the following year and you know they then walk away with a three star and mm. I think that's it's lovely to hear that and it's it's great to hear that people are kind of 
open to that feedback and listening to it. Yeah, was it Jacob from Soise? He was telling me a story about that, where he'd started with a one star maybe 20 years ago and every year had taken on this feedback. Exactly. And, and you know, I know um, you've had Dhruv on this show before who makes Tempus uh, charcuterie and he always talks about kind of looking at the feedback and taking a deep breath and kind of taking it on board. And After a day of doing. being annoyed. Yeah, <laughs> all happy. Or, you know, he, he does some, he's had some great wins in the past. But as you say, people are entering products as their babies, so they think it's going to be well it means a lot doesn't it and you've put it in so you think it's already perfect and then to have somebody say actually it needs a little more balance or what about a bit more acidity it's hard to hear but you know Drew, when he came on the show here was saying how he'd gone away and actually tweaked a few products and had more three stars this year than he'd ever had before absolutely yeah but he's been entering consistently year after year and listening to the feedback which is absolutely you know incredible i also like hearing the stories of people who whose businesses grow i mean Lithia, you mentioned that before you were making all these cheesecakes at home mm. and that you and your sister were, I think you said at one point, creating a hundred cheesecakes per from week. home per week. Yeah. And you just couldn't deal with your orders. And so now you've got this commercial premises. I know you're only a week in, but it's it's that kind of thing. And I guess your challenge is how you make it consistently good going forward. And, yeah. you know, that scaling issue, which is a challenge sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's actually what you were speaking about earlier of how great is that most of the uh, prices are for small businesses or for small producers and I think it has to be with that no like the fact of keeping the quality because it's very difficult to make big big um, uh, amounts and big quantities and keep the quality the consistency and we are now realizing uh, especially that they the week before opening we had to try the the ovens because every oven is and um, and until we got to a point where we say, okay, now we got it. It's true that we could have started baking and baking until, but it's it's it's, it's very nice to be able to produce in big quantities. But we need to 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 be careful uh, to keep everything as as it was. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to be able to now have like a proper uh, place to bake. And I think you're not alone in, in, in that commitment to consistency. And that's, you know, what customers want as well. If they find something and it's got an award on it, they want to be able to come back and buy it again and again and again. And by making it yourself, you have that level of control that you don't. Otherwise, I was yeah. talking to um, Pam and James Digva from Source Shop, who've done very well in the in the Great Taste Awards accreditation, having got lots of three stars. But they'd looked at outsourcing their manufacturing and then very quickly had snatched it back in house and gone, no, we want to control this. We want to control the quality. We want to maintain this level of flavor that we know that only we can do. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I completely agree that um, if, he, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see now what we do because for us it's quite recent, uh, all this growing and especially growing exponentially uh, is, is um, we need to keep an eye, of course, uh, but yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Christabel, who, were the, who was the supreme champion at the Golden Forks this year? So it was a company called Rusos Dairy, Rusas Dairy sorry, and they um, produce a cheese. It's a spreadable soft cheese and it's called Galateri. It's it really interesting, that one, because Rusas produce a lot of feta. You, if you actually kind of keep an eye out for it, you see their, their brand in a lot of places. But Galateri is a really relatively new product for the UK, definitely, or at least it's a very, it's harder to find. And it's got this amazing kind of <laughs> what we were talking about earlier, but this amazing like lactic, lemony, citrusy zing, really smooth. People, you know, spread it on toast, but there was a lot of judges just saying, I'm going to keep this in the fridge and spoon mm. it out of <laughs> out yeah. of the pot. And my favourite, I think, or well, not my favourite, but one of the ones I really was impressed by was the, the soy sauce. That was amazing, yeah. So it was a, a brewed soy sauce from Taiwan. And they brought a film crew with them, was, didn't they? It was really they brilliant. were so lovely. I and mean, I think you might have been one of the people that said it actually, but about people came up to me in the awards ceremony saying, Oh my god, I've just I've cried about four times mm. this evening. One when you guys won with your cheesecake, one when the Taiwanese winners won. Um, I can't even think now who else was there, but yeah, we had some great It was stuff. emotional and y you were on the stage there in front of these sort of three or four hundred people and, and telling the story behind some of these brands and the journeys they'd gone through and the the difficulties they'd faced and seeing people win and the genuine excitement, like you guys jumping around everywhere, going nuts. And and I remember the lady on the on the soy sauce stand, she was just she was so overcome she couldn't even speak, could she? Her colleague had to take over the interview with Nigel Barden. She was just completely overwhelmed. It was 
It actually brings tears to my eyes yeah, now just thinking a, about it. A Hungarian man who'd won the pumpkin seed oil yeah. and he was equally just emotional because, you know, people put a lot of hard work into these products and it really means a lot to be recognised. Yeah, and they've flown over from Hungary and they've brought their, you know, their team with them. It's a huge thing, isn't it? It's yeah. a big thing. Yeah, yeah. I remember the soy sauce and we've talked about it so many times because it was very emotional. And as well, the soy sauce is really, really good. I also remember the Spanish products because at the beginning we thought because the award for the Spanish products was already given and we didn't know which category so we said uh, congratulations and then yeah it was it was a different one so it's great. true so yes you thought your mo- moment <laughs> yeah. had passed yeah yeah nice. I re- <laughs> and we made the golden forks a lot more international this year um deliberately so because in the past we'd focused on uh, regions in the UK and in Ireland and actually there's 109 countries that enter Great Taste so it was really important to us to make sure that the final set of awards reflected that. Yeah I mean it's a huge like percentage isn't it that that are actually uh, entries coming from around the world. Absolutely yeah and and it's growing every year actually I think and it's you know what we're seeing here in the UK where people are concerned about where their food comes from and want to know about it that's happening worldwide so it's great to see Mm. so many artisan producers doing well. It's absolutely incredible. Before we go, Lithia, where is your shop? I forgot to ask. How do we buy your incredible <laughs> cheesecake? Yes, so the shop is in 12 Connaught Street in this uh, little village called Connaught Village. In, uh, it's close to Paddington and Marvel Art. Okay, so right in the centre of London. What's the closest yes. tube stop? Uh, I'd say Marvel Art and Paddington. Okay, Marvel Art and Paddington. And are you still doing all your your weekend food markets as yes, well? Keeping yes, yes. busy? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. We go to um, Sloan Square on Saturdays, one Saturday a month, and Chiswick on uh, first uh, the third Sunday of the month. And then we go to Ali Pali on um, North London and Oval and Balam in South London on Saturdays. So we have on our website that we they can also order and pre-order in advance. Um, can they have that delivered around the UK? Yeah, in in London. Only London, At yeah. The fair. moment I was thinking, London. you've got to keep that flat, haven't yes, you? Yes, yes. I would not trust Hermes yes, with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> we actually, we deliver in London and... Most of the times goes well, but it's true that some careers uh, just uh, we always say is they very delicate. It's very yeah. delicate. Please keep horizontal. But yes, we deliver in London. And oh, fantastic! So if you're in London, you have to get down to Connaught Street and try this cheesecake. Can people buy just individual slices? Yes, they can. Yeah. Yes, amazing. With a coffee, I think, in the, uh, <gasps> in the shop. With the yeah, coffee. coffee. Right. And we have plans to pair it with wine as well. In a few months, uh, the concept of the store will be the cheesecake and coffee and also a glass of wine fantastic (laughs) it does doesn't it (laughs) so we will make sure that we share the details of la moritu their website and things like that on our website and on our socials so you guys can find this absolutely incredible thank you so much for coming in lithia and bringing this incredible cheesecake with you (laughs) absolutely divine thank you but we're out of time thank you so much christabel i've absolutely loved the guild of fine food takeover of food rebels no, it's been brilliant. Thanks for having us. It's been absolutely brilliant. You've shown such a passion for all the different food things and I'm just in awe of the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes at the Guild of Fine Food to put on all these incredible shows and events. Absolutely amazing. You've been listening to Food Rebels, which is available on radio stations around the UK. You can also listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and Audible. Please remember to subscribe and rate us with five stars if, if you think we are good enough. Uh, it makes a huge difference to our podcast. We're also on Instagram at underscore food rebels food underscore rebels sorry so give us a follow and if you'd like to come on the show just get in touch thank you for joining us and make sure you face the rebellion